Nature is capable of unleashing death and destruction onto communities living along coastal zones all over the world, unexpectedly and without any warning. Mankind has devised ways of mitigating such sudden events. Today, this can be achieved by coastal zone management carried out by scientists, bureaucrats and engineers. But the effects of their actions and of those of nature affect the common people. To have effective coastal zone management, does everybody, including the common people, need to play a role, no matter how small? The Netherlands has a coastline of approximately 300 kilometers. More than half of the country lies below sea level and the coast, through its dunes, dikes and other water barriers, protects it against the North Sea. Coastal zone management, I would say, is the, uh, the dealing with all the functions of a particular landscape type, okay, coastal dunes in such a way that uh, they um, are for the benefit of the people using the dunes and uh, of the, uh, the nature in the dunes. Public participation means uh, that you give people the chance to participate in what's happening in their surrounding or in their living um, surrounding and not only in decision making of what is going to be implemented but also very much in uh, defining what the problems are, what the challenges are, what their needs are. So they are involved and they have a say in the whole process from problem definition up to what the possible solutions are and how that affects their living surrounding. Public participation is uh, intended to uh, improve the quality of decision making and to improve the public support for policies. And in modern societies, more and more the situation exists that individual actors, and with an actor I mean for instance a, a government or a local authority, so they are not able to solve complex issues on their own. To illustrate public participation in the Netherlands, let us consider the Mayendel Dune project. The Mayendel Dunes are to the north of The Hague. They are managed by Dunaire, a drinking water company which, a few years ago, decided to restore them to their natural state by removing vegetation from them and allowing natural processes of sand and wind to take place so that over the years the dunes would regenerate. However, the public who uses the dunes mainly for recreation was concerned about losing them and opposed the project. A mediator carried out a public participation program to reconcile the two competing interests and a compromise was eventually reached. The pine trees, a small lake and some of the dunes were to remain in their initial state. public participation um, it creates two sides you don't know the other side you only know they're against and yeah. they know we are against yeah. so you cannot compromise but if you're in a group in a council or an open plan mm. process you get to know each other and you get to yeah. know each other arguments but if you put out your point of view without listening to the other one yeah there you have. then you have problems you won't problems. find this middle yeah. ground so we also had to learn how to how to listen mm -hmm. yeah. if you don't participate the public in an early stage it might affect your, your process planning. That's, yep. that's basically it. Yep. Uh, it generates bad press, which is mm. not good for your image. If, so, if a stakeholder um, doesn't agree with your plans and he has the possibility to have a certain influence yeah. on a certain level, yeah. uh, he she used it for sure. We had to deal with this. Yeah. It was uh, very far till the, till the Queen. Yeah, we got a visit till from the, the Queen, queen of Holland. She came, uh, she came on a work visit. Yeah, yeah, to visit us, yeah. Uh, their, their influence reached to the municipality level, yeah. which said, uh, we won't give you a permit unless you deal with the stakeholders. Yeah. So, um, for sure it had an effect, but looking back, 
uh, it might take more time, it might not generate results purely from an ecocentric point of view, like mm -hmm. nature results will generate as much, but because together you find yeah. middle grounds, yeah. not with everyone, but it's, it's not a magical solution to all your problems. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's still stakeholders who are not happy with, with us yeah. or certain aspects of our work. But generally, you achieve more uh, together than just pushing through your, uh, your opinion. Yeah. And I could also say, yeah, here we started, end of this project, we had enemies, and we started yeah. here's the overplan process, and enemies, uh, they are now friends of ours. Uh, Holland is a funny country, you know, everybody thinks uh, he has a right to, uh, to say something, because many people are living around the dunes, everybody feels this is my dune, so I'm a stakeholder and I've got something to say, and uh, whether they are organized or not. Uh, With coastal zone management, it depends on how involved the people really are, uh, how committed they can be, and so how much influence they should have. So I say yes, always involve them, but whether it's at the level of informing them, consulting them or letting them co-decide, well, that's, that's a question. If an, um, an individual person must have a voice and, and should, must be asked because the person is directly affected. And the person lives in, in this region or in this area. And the person may be affected by flooding, for instance, if you talk about coastal management and increasing uh, seawater levels. Well, for, for the government, Public participation might result in better information and for often local people know more about the local situation and so there's a lot of knowledge to be gained. Because people have the attitude like hey we pay taxes and we pay the government and we pay the water board so they should do their job. We're not the experts, why should we have to talk about that? They should just do it. It are the wrong people who design the, the process and are the wrong people who facilitate the process, people who don't have any expertise in how to engage with communities, how to, how to uh, deal with power structures within a community, how to ensure that everybody uh, can um, uh, actively and, and uh, participate in the process. I think it is more reason of um, they are not informed well and they are not uh, involved early enough, early before any decision is made. It's often enforced, eh? often participation becomes a an, an, an compulsory part of a project. So everybody is doing it, we have to, based on, on uh, the EU Water Framework Directive and because it's in our, uh, the way we implement our, uh, large infrastructural projects. Well, if you want to, if you want to, you can participate. You can go to the evenings, the meetings that are arranged for you. So you can participate as much as you want to. And you could go more in the political scene if you want to. But most people don't want to, of course. They only want to complain when it's going wrong. Sometimes they um, uh, make a decision on their own. So. Mm -hmm. No questions about us. But as a citizen living here, mm. they will gather up meetings. They will uh, they will sit with you and listen, but they they will make their own decisions. They not really listen. Mm. They only look as far as their own garden, not further. Mm. And then they say, "Oh, well, now it's going wrong. Now I'm not uh, having fun anymore with the project or whatever." I, w I wish it would be a truth, because I wish it would be something that that we automatically would do and that would be done in, in a good way by the right people at the right moment. Um, but unfortunately, too often um, it's done in a wrong way. And also, I mean, it's just the reality of life that there are power structures, that there are already political deals which are deciding what will happen in reality. So often it, it remains a myth. Participation has been successful if you define public participation as 
the full participation of every inhabitant, no. There are very good examples, but there are also very bad examples. It's, it's, it's human practice and sometimes things go better than other times. As I said, it's, it depends on the decisions that are being taken, what kind of investments are planned, what it is that the issue is about. So I, I would be much more nuanced about looking at a case-by-case -case, uh, uh, basis and looking at the context to then to say something about, okay, how have people been involved in, in the decision-making? Decisions, and they will pretend yeah. they will listen to you. But in the end, they will do as they please. And I think the, the capital, the money, is ruling. And there is a saying in the, in the Netherlands, the one who pays, he decides. So I think that's, that's what's happening. Is it an issue of the one who pays the sides, or of people shaping their destiny through participation? What do you think?